So we got a three shovel system. Inside the cave, I got this little sho uh, shovel to kind of do all the break up inside. And then I have this roof rake that uh, and I'm actually scraping the snow out of there with the roof rake. And then I'm taking the big scooper shovel and filling, filling up my sled to go dump it in the backyard. You can see I've already piled some of it here, piled some of it here, so. Well guys, digging out's going pretty good. Hoping to uh, be able to open this thing right up. And then I'm gonna have my wood stove right in this area. I have my cot in this area, but there's something hilarious I gotta share with you guys. As I'm digging through here, look what shows up in the snow. My freaking missing truck keys from months ago. <laughs> good thing I decided to build this. Well, I guess I would've got them in the spring, but probably rusty as hell. What a good find. Woo, all right, got this thing freaking built. I'll give you guys a grand tour when I got it all set up, but uh, you know, I was thinking maybe sleeping in here tonight. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Uh, there are definitely obviously safety concerns when you build these things. I kept this area pretty thin. You can see there's some light here. So if this did cave in, I could I could definitely punch through this section. Uh, but yeah, check this out. <laughs> so put the wood stove in here. Um, I think I might make a, a hot gin for my grandfather tonight on or this evening on here, and I'll show you guys how to do that a little bit later. Uh, but right now, let's get fire started, and uh, well. Let's just keep uh, practicing this new skill. It's actually, you know what? This is uh, one of my uh, new favorite ways of starting a fire. I'm not going to lie. So I am going to have to start uh, making some more uh, jute material here. Um, until I can go pick up some natural tinder. But <sighs> gas as of uh, today or yesterday in Manitoba is $1.63 a liter. So... Um, unless things change this spring and summer, man, a lot of my, uh, my plans this summer are, uh, starting to wash away. I mean, I, even at a buck 49 right now, to fill up my truck, I think it was 130, $140. So it's just, uh, it just won't be cost effective for me to actually go to the bush this year. So if I am sticking around the city a little bit more this year, we're going to get hella creative. There's a bunch of streams, a bunch of creeks within the city that I want to try uh, fishing. I want to bring, obviously, Olivia for some hikes and stuff like that through those sections. Maybe we can snag some little fish out of those creeks. I don't know. It'll be interesting anyways, but it is what it is. And as long as we're not uh, fighting in World War III, I guess, this summer too, that could also be a possibility. But anyways, let's get... We're not talking politics here anyways. Let's... uh. Let's start a fire. That's way too. Right, remember, there's that char cloth. I'll have to say sometimes you just got bad ideas and a flint and steel fire in an enclosed space like this was a bad idea <laughs> so i think next time if i was to use flint and steel to start uh, my stove inside of an enclosed space what i'd do is i'd, I'd start outside first maybe start uh 
a fire under like a little stick get like a bit of a bigger stick so you can transfer a flame into it i think that's the route i would go because doing it inside here i mean because your tinder just smokes so much before it catches especially like this this is the tinder that came with that cheap kit and uh, who knows what it is it could be freaking horse hair for all i know all i know is it, and honestly i i want to find some better stuff because that stuff doesn't really ignite as, as nicely as i'd like to like it to so anyways we'll get a nice little fire going in here and uh We'll go see if Olivia maybe wants to join me out here. We'll play inside the little snow fort. Give you guys a tour. And, uh, yeah. All right, guys. Time for the tour. I'm coming, I'm coming. Ah. What? Hey, Olivia. Hey, ah. Yeah. yeah we got Harmer. Oh, we got a little fire. Got a hole through there. We got some freaking marshmallows. They're gonna cook on here. Okay. Olivia rocking some new skills. All right, so I told, uh, I know Olivia's super excited to eat one of these marshmallows, eh, Olivia? But I told her, don't eat them yet, because we're going to cook them on the fire. She's ne You've never had a marshmallow on the fire before, eh? No. No. All right, so I'm going to make a, a mallow stick here. What do we got? What do we got? Okay. So So actually, I'm going to be using my stepdad's knife, and this was actually the first knife I ever made. So yeah, she was a beast. Old file, then the kneeling, and like I said, this thing is an absolute beast. The handle was um, some cedar from BC where I lived, but you can see, yeah. So still absolutely sharp, holds an edge like a, like no other. But we're going to make a marshmallow stick. So what's that? Ooh. Okay. All right, Olivia. So, you know what you do? Yeah. So, you put, no, hold on, hold on. You put the marshmallow in the stick with us. No, hold on, hold on. Okay. Now we crack this fire open. No, hold on, you gotta wait. I don't want to do it. Just hold on one second. I just wanna show you what you do. I don't, you don't wanna burn it, okay? So we're gonna move all the fire in a little bit deeper inside there. Okay. So can you hold it there? Is it too hot? No. Okay, so just hold it right there for a second, okay? Okay, you gotta turn it a little bit. Oh, oh you don't wanna hit the wood. Oh, she's starting to smoke. So before look at that. Oh, it's starting to crisp up right there. So before we let that crisp up, we take it off. And then we're going to flip it. Because we want to have a nice even cook. All right, you ready? Or you want me to do it? You won't do it. Me do it? Oh, it's starting to smoke. Starting to smoke. Oh, oh. There we go. Yeah. So, what you do, Olivia? Yeah. Okay, you pull that off like this. Okay, here. Hold on. Here, take it. Take this little piece. 
tired? Yeah. No, don't don't wipe it on you. <laughs> it's a really sticky treat. What do you think? Is that good? Okay, eat the rest. Don't wipe it on yourself. Good? Yeah, way better on the fire, eh? Mm -hmm. It's fine in here. You find it fun in here? You like the snow cave? Yeah. I think I think you like the snow cave because it has marshmallows in it. You got this uh Tasty uh, BC beer. This thing's actually a, a pretty strong beer. I believe it is nine percent, nine and a half percent. All right, we got the no, no. Herminate. What? The Herminator Ice Buck. Perfect winter beer. <laughs> all right, you want another one? Yeah. Okay. Right on. So we're just gonna chill out and then. Uh, We'll see you guys in the evening for um, a little hot gin. Hey guys, welcome back. So it's the evening now. Um, yeah, here by myself. The kids are going to sleep. Ali's just chilling. So, and like I said, I want to make a drink with you guys. So I've made this drink before and I've filmed it before, but I didn't understand that when I run a microphone in the GoPro that uh, if I just hit just the record, rather the quick record, it doesn't record the audio. So the whole scene of me making this drink and honoring my grandfather with it. Um, I didn't have any audio, before, so I always wanted to redo it. Now, basically, it's a very simple drink. It consists of a few ingredients, gin, honey, and hot water. That's it. I'll get in a little bit more detail about the gin and the honey in a second. Um, but yeah, anyway, so my grandfather sh showed me this drink. And he always said it would taste a little bit like moonshine, which it does. But only because of this particular gin that he has. I cannot get this gin here in Manitoba. This is uh, from Quebec, and he calls it Gin de Carper. And um, it's a terrible gin. Like, it's not very good at all, but for whatever reason in this drink, it's just like, it's pop out, right? This this drink is my, is my pop out. Um, so I made it with, a, like, Manitoba gins, and it just never tasted right. And I had a brain fart about a couple months ago. And I'm like, you know what? I think... For some reason, there's a bottle of Gin de Carper in the basement in one of the, the cupboards. Because I'm, like, I'm sure he, I'm pretty sure he left a shot behind when he came over for my birthday that one year. So anyway, I found this and I was ecstatic. Like I, I have enough. I might even be able to get two out of this, but definitely at least one. So I want to, um, you know, wait for a special moment. I, hell. The snow cave is a pretty special moment for me. Anyways, I put a lot of work in this thing. And you know what? Like, this thing is so roomy. Like, I'm sitting up on top of, a, of a, like, a box right now. And, like, my my stove isn't even close to me. If I can really. So, you know, it's, I'm, it's pretty massive in here. Enough room for... Me, Olivia, I mean, Ali can even come in here with Jack, technically. So, it's pretty sweet. So, anyways, I want to share this drink with you guys. All right. So, I'm, you know, it's been six months since my puppy has passed away, and I think about him all the time. And I just, you know, I want to give him a little je t'aime, you know? Je m'en coucou, papa, you know? So, oh yeah, the honey. The honey is also special, but this is more special to me. Um, so this is my, this is the best honey I've ever had. So it's a local guy and it's a small, small, like it's a small bee operation anyways. 
and this uh, honey is produced from uh, flowers and sagebrush around uh, one of my boss's um, houses by the river so it tastes like I think it was he said it was sage but anyways this honey is unreal so this is the honey I'll be using so I'm just wait for the water to boil which I think it should be right away I'm actually gonna have a look Not boiling, but it's actually pretty hot. So, I think we'll start getting ready here. All right, so I got my cup here. here. Got my hoodie. Oh, man, last year I probably went through six six of these jars i was just putting it in my coffee and everything but like it's too expensive to, to do that it's just it's such a treat unpasteurized like just just the best like if this is this is the bee's knees anyways so we take A gen, you know, a generous scoop of uh, honey. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm actually not going to use all of it. I'm going to try to. Might be a tiny bit weak, but you know what? I want to. Uh, I want to get a second one out of this. Yeah. Honestly, like in a cool setting, ice fishing, winter camping, chilling out in this snow cave. This is just like it's one of those little warm warm me up kind of drinks, you know. And for me, it's just a, also it's a, it's a memory, right? So definitely gonna have to make a trip to get back and. Pick up a couple of those bottles. <laughs> yep. That's it right there. I mean, it's not, I know it's not for everybody, but you know what? For me, this is everything, right? So. Anyways, thanks for joining along on that one. Like I said, this was a definitely a fun little project. I don't think it's like super super practical to do it in like a survival setting so, unless you can really find a big mound of like packed down snow it'd be a little bit tough but uh and you know what I, even with running the wood stove here i don't know how long it would take to like really melt it enough inside to you know affect the structure of it we'll see i'm we'll probably play in this for a little while until it melts the roof off i guess <laughs> well thanks for watching guys and whoever's new to this you can check out my rest of my content and if you like it feel free to subscribe uh if not th thanks for stopping by and to all of my loyal subscribers thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and uh and tell us what you guys think of our little uh snow cave down in uh, the comments have a good night, guys. Catch you guys next time.